Hello YouTube, this is Umils03. So now we've made it to lesson 42 in the Java curriculum and we've already reviewed several methods for sorting a particular array or array list of sortable objects, right? We're not just talking about an array of ints, we're talking about any data structure, so an array or an array list of sortable elements. And we said not just ints and doubles are sortable, but strings are sortable if we consider their length. And also person objects are sortable if we consider the compare to method that we implemented in the class. So what we do is we essentially will be taking a look at the person class and we essentially opened this up and we said, since person implements comparable, it must provide a compare to method that returns an int and accepts an object. And so what we do is that object that we're accepting, we just explicitly convert it to a person. And then we're looking at the get name, the result of calling the length method on the get name method, right? So it returns a string, it returns the number of letters in the name for our current person object and compares it to the number of letters in the name for the other person objects, the Q, which is the person form of the P that was passed into the method. And so this allows us to sort person objects and say that one person is bigger by bigger than someone else essentially and the, for the purposes of sorting. And so this is the definition that we give it. And so that's that allows us. And so what we did is we looked in the sorting, we, we built this sorting class in lessons 39 through 41 and so we had this selection sort. We have different selection sorts, right? So first we, we talked about one that just basically switched the values at the different index positions of an int array. And then we said for a string array, it's awfully similar, but we just need to call the length method rather than just looking at array of J and array of index. And then for the person implementation, the array list of person objects, there's a couple of things that are different. The first is that we're talking about an array, not an, an array list, not an array. So instead of saying dot length on the name of the array, you do dot size function on the name of the array list. But all of this is the same. All of this is going to be the same until you get to right here. So instead of just saying that one person object in the array list, so one, you say group dot get of J, you can't just say is less than group dot get of index because it doesn't know how to necessarily say that one person object is literally larger than or smaller than another, but you can call the compare to method and then it can compare these two elements. And then down here, hopefully this was clear enough. So this is basically switching the index positions of two of the person objects in the array list because it says, okay, the person with the shorter, with the shorter name is must be the one at uh, group dot get of index, right? And so we're just going to basically make that assignment because we said, remember index equals J in this Boolean. So really we would be looking at group dot like get of J. So that has the person with the shorter name. And then if you say group dot set of index group dot get of I, it will assign the person object at this index position to be the person object that current is currently at I. And then this line of code assigns uh, is going to assign what that, what's that index position i to this shorter person. And so this is the example of a temporary variable. And we've been saying a couple of times now that that's helpful for just replacing or switching the values of two variables. So that's the selection sort. That's the array list of person objects implementation of the selection sort algorithm. What I would recommend you do is now that in lessons 39 and 40, we have implementations for the bubble sort and selection and insertion sort, we made implementations for an int array, but go ahead and try to do an, ins an insertion sort and a bubble sort on an array list of person objects and practice calling your compare to method, which was implemented in your person class. So anyway, so we've already talked a lot about sorting algorithms and we said that selection sort doesn't perform as well as insertion sort, but it does perform a little bit better than bubble sort, so it's sort of the intermediate. And so we were able to call the two string representation of the person objects and we saw that P3 was actually printed before P2 because of the logic of the selection sort algorithm. It said that for person P3, the P3.compare2 uh, P3 of P2 was returning a negative number. So it did the switch and it made P3 come before P2. And so we can just compile that and run that. But I think that's enough of a review of the previous lesson. And so that's why you see the Toby representation of that printing that person objects before printing the Katrina objects because it's a selection sort according to the lengths of their names. Let's talk about searching algorithms. So what we're gonna do is come up with ways that Java could search for a particular element within an array or an array list. And we're going to start simple. We're just going to start with an array of ints, but we want to work up to maybe searching an array list of person objects for a particular person's name. 
And so we're going to build on that. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to come up with a class called searching, just like we have a sorting class from lesson 39 for lesson 42. Let's do a searching class that we're going to use for this lesson and the next. What you're going to do is it's basically just going to be a collection of static methods. So we're just going to be comparing and contrasting two searching algorithms between this method, between this lesson and the next lesson. This searching algorithm that we talk about in this lesson is going to be very, very straightforward. If we're given an array and we need to find an element in the array, what we're going to do is we're going to start at the beginning of the array and we're just going to iterate through the elements until we have a match between the element that we're looking for and the elements in our list. You know, So if there's a match, if we're looking for 42 and one of the elements in our list is 42, then we're going to go ahead and indicate that. So what I'm going to do now, I don't know why that showed up there. So what we're going to do is we're going to build the, um, the lin it's called linear search. It's called linear search. And there's a Wikipedia, you know, you can learn about this online and there's a lot of descriptions that you can see about this online. I'm not just coming up with this term. This is a official algorithm, right? And other, other, meth other programming languages can have sorting and searching algorithms too. Like bubble sort, you could do that in Python. You could do a selection sort in C++ as long as you were using the right data structure. So these are computer programming fundamentals more so than just Java particulars. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that a linear search, which apparently is also called a sequential search, basically just sequentially checks every element of the list until a match has been found. And so we're gonna do that with an int array to start because int arrays are pretty easy to conceptualize, but then we're gonna work up to an array list of person objects where we're gonna be searching for a particular name. And then if one of the person objects has a name that matches the string that we pass into that call of the linear search function, then we're gonna to wanna to return the index position of that person objects within the array list. But we'll get there. So let's go, let's go ahead and do public static and linear search. And then we need to pass in an array that we're gonna be searching and then a target value. So a target value that we're looking for. So obviously you need a list and then what is it that you're looking for? And then what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up with a couple of initial values. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep track of a Boolean variable that will determine whether or not the value that we're looking for has been found. So what you're going to do is you're going to say boolean found equals false and then you could say int result equals negative one. So remember when we talked about in lessons five and six the string methods, we said that if a substring doesn't exist within a string object on which the substring method is being called, then the index sub and last index sub methods will return negative one. And this is basically going to be an index sub method. It's going to return an int. It's going to return an index position where target exists allegedly within this int array. And so what we would do is what index position would we give if the element doesn't exist within the array? Well, we would just say negative one because obviously someone can't occupy that position. So this would be the indication that we didn't find the element. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna iterate through the array. So there's three different ways to do that. You can do a while loop, you can do a for loop, or you can do a for each loop. Let's go ahead and do a while loop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, basically I need to go ahead and check the index position. And I'm gonna basically say um, index position is equal to zero. And I could say something like, like, while index position is less than the length of the array, and I haven't found the element yet. So remember, found is initialized to false. So the first time we run through this while loop, certainly not found will be true. And if you're initializing index position to zero, presumably array.length is gonna have at least like two elements in it, right? At least one or two elements. And so, you know, both of these booleans are gonna be true. So you're just gonna come right into this while loop the first time you run the loop. And because you need to check the first element. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna say if the elements of the, the elements in the array at that particular index position that we're looking at right now is equal to the target that was passed into the function, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna indicate that. So you're gonna say, oh, look, I found it. So you're gonna jump out of the while loop because if you find the element, you don't wanna keep iterating through the list. This is going to return the index position of the first occurrence of the, ele of the target element within the array. So you're gonna say target uh, found equals true. And then at that point, if you do find it, then you can reassign the result to whatever index position that is. But the only way these two lines of code are gonna run, the only way result is gonna be assigned to anything other than negative one 
is if you do find the target within the array. And then at that point, since found flips to true, you break out of the loop. So you get that result value, you get that index position value, and that's it. That's, what's your, that's what you're returning. So then at the end, we're just gonna go ahead and say return result. And that will give us the index position of the first occurrence of the target element within the array. And so what you can do is we can make a documentation for this real quick because we're doing pretty well on time. So I'm just gonna remind you about the documentation. So what we would do is we would say, this is a linear search algorithm to find the target element within the int array. And then what you would do is you would have the parameters, right? So param array, the array to search for a particular element, you know, just it's kind of brief descriptions of the different parameters. So param a target, the element to search for, right? And then you would have return, uh, return the index position of the first occurrence of that element, the index position of the first occurrence of the element or negative one if it was not found. And so now you can go ahead and run that and we can go ahead and test that. So what we'll do is we'll create our sandbox main method and you could say public static void main string args and we can just test the functionality of this method and verify that we get the, that we get the position that we're looking for. So if you say int t, equals 8, 2, 81, 73, 55, 56, 45, 45, 2, and 73. Okay, so here you, you see a couple of 73s and a couple of 2s. But let's say we're looking for this 73. So we're going to want to return the index position um, of, we're going to want to return the, the index position of 73. So you could say int value equals 73. And then what you could say is you could say that you could say that the first um, that the index position of the first occurrence of, and then whatever the value is, right? You can make a dynamic. So if you put 72 in here, then it would find the 72 and then it would tell you negative one, right? But if you put the eight, then it could tell you, you know, index position of first occurrence of eight, and then it would tell you zero. So then you're gonna concatenate the value with a colon, and then you can run the linear search method with T and the value. So then you could either call linear search, or if you wanna be formal, do searching.linear search because the linear search static method belongs to the searching class. And you'd need to pass in the arguments in that particular order. So now what you would do is you would go ahead and pass in T and the value, and so we should be expecting three. So now if we're gonna go ahead and compile this code and run it, and then we can go ahead and see, so then what's the issue here? So now we're having an infinite loop. We need to reset the Java virtual machine and figure out what went wrong here. The problem is that we never step through the array. So I realize, you know, sometimes we have to think on our feet and figure out where to problem solve. The problem with this array is that it's never going to get off of an index position of zero. So this is something we have to be careful for, with uh, careful of with while loops. So what you're going to do is you would simply have to just go ahead and increment the index position if this Boolean doesn't end up being true. So now you go ahead and compile it, right? And now we can go ahead and make sure that this works an index position of the first occurrence of 73 is three. And that's exactly what we're expecting because we said that arrays start at index position zero. And that's exactly what we would have here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have an implementation where we create person objects and we're gonna search through an array list of person objects for a particular name of a person. And then if at any point calling the get name method on one of those person objects uh, yields a string that's equal to this target name string that we're looking for, then we'll return the index position of that person object in the array list. So let me tell you what I mean by that. So what we're gonna do, it's gonna be a public static int again. It's gonna return an index position, but this time we're gonna be talking about an array list of person objects. So you're gonna say array list of type person, and then you could call it group, call it whatever you want. And then let's look for a name, okay? So you're not gonna be looking for a particular person object. You're gonna be looking for a name. So just for each of the person objects in group, you're going to call the get name method and then if at any point the get name method is equal to name you're going to turn return the index position of that person object in the array list and so you know you could go ahead and come up with documentation for that but you could say something like linear search algorithm which returns the index position of a person object uh, whose name matches the target name or something like that and then you could say param group the array list to search Okay, and then this is all, I'm trying to keep this object oriented as much as possible, but you could try this for any type of data structure that you want. You could do an array list of strings, an array list of Boolean objects. You could do an array of doubles, array of ints. You know, you can try all these things out. So what you're gonna do, so another param here is name the name of the person object to search for. 
and then you would just say return the index position of the matching person object in the array list. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we have five minutes left, and so we would just go ahead and have a similar formulation here, and we can do it with a for loop or a for each loop instead. So you say Boolean found equals false, int result equals negative one. That's sort of the same here. And then you, or you could say, let's do it with a for loop this time. So for int index position equals zero, and then you could say something like not found and uh, and index position is less than group dot size. Do you see how it has to check both of these booleans because we want to stop iterating through the loop either when we get to the end of the array list or when we've already found the element. So it needs to check both of those elements at each run through the loop. And then you would simply just increment the index position at the end of each iteration. So index position plus equals one. And then what you would do is you would basically be looking for a particular type of, of uh, Boolean here. So what you would do is you would say if group dot get of index position. So what does that return? That returns a person object, but you need to reference their, the get name call of the person object because you're comparing it to a string. So the only way you're going to get a string out of a person object is to call the get name method on that particular instance of the person class. And so what you would do is you would just say, you know, if group of get index position and then you would have to just say um, is equal to name right the name that is being fed in here right and so if you have that match then you're going to go ahead and insert found to true and the result is equal to index position so then at that point the uh, it would stop running and then you don't have to increment index position like we forgot to do because remember it's already built in with the for loop and it's saying we have an issue with the array list because remember every time we are going to use array list functionality we need to go ahead and import it so we imported it at the top of the sorting class but not at the top of the searching class yet so we're just going to say import java.util.arraylist and then it, and then we can go ahead and take a look so there's other errors here so then it says we're missing return statement. So now we need to just go ahead and return the result. It returned the result in index position. So now in the last three minutes, let's demonstrate this. We're gonna create a very, um, very quick main method here. And I wanna create an array list of person objects. And then we are going to see if the linear search method works according to how we want it to. So you could say person one equals new person, right? And that's going to, I don't know, I can't remember exactly what the, what kinds of constructors do we have here, right? So it assigns different default values depending on which constructor you're using, right? But uh, this code is kind of collapsing on me and hard to read right now, but we can just go ahead and call one of the ordinary constructors, right? Just to demonstrate the point here. So let's call person of string name and an age. We can just try calling some of these constructors, right? So we could say person P1 equals new person of Kevin. And so we're just gonna wanna get the index position where one of our names exists, right? And so then you could say person P2 equals new person of Wallace and Gromit, okay? And then you can just, you can call whatever you want. So uh, another one, another person that could be Bob, right? And we're just gonna wanna get a particular index position. We're just gonna wanna get a particular index position. So then what you can do is we're gonna say Yolanda, and then let's go ahead and create that array list of person objects that we need because that uh, linear search method requires us to input an array list of person objects. An array of person objects wouldn't work. We don't have an implementation for that right now. So what you would do, but you could certainly make one. So then you would just go ahead and add these uh, elements, right? So you would say group.add of P1, group.add of P2, group.add of P3, and group.add of P4. And then let's go ahead and just search for the first element. I just wanna show you one example and we're sort of running low on time here, but let's go ahead and make sure that we get an index position of zero when we search this um, when we search this particular array list, right? So what you would do is you would call linear search or searching dot linear search, and then you would pass in the array list and then you would pass in the string. So then if you call Kevin, right? And then hopefully we're gonna be expecting this to, return to print zero on the console because Kevin is the first element that appears. So now if we're gonna go ahead and compile it and run it, and we're gonna run the main method of the searching class, and then we're gonna go ahead and run it. And indeed we get that zero there. And that demonstrates that the linear search method appears to be working how it's supposed to be working, right? And then if you went ahead and changed to this, what if you do lowercase kev concatenated with in? The problem here is that it's case sensitive. Remember in lesson five, we said that the equals method of the string class is case sensitive. So what you would have to do, you would have to change 
uh, and if you wanted it to be case sensitive, case insensitive, you'd call the equals ignore case method instead. But hopefully that's enough for now. So negative one, it didn't exist in the array list. So hopefully that helps you understand from email. So three, thanks for watching and please subscribe.